Hi, come along with me while I work on this page in my art journal and stick around to the end because I have a bonus for you. Welcome back to my studio or welcome if this is your first time visiting. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed if you like what you're seeing here. I am working in my tall skinny journal that I created a while back. There's a video for that. You find it in my playlist. And I am starting on a page that is um, made from watercolor paper. And I'm putting down a layer of gesso because I want to seal this paper in preparation for what is going to come next. So I just want a nice, even, fairly heavy coat of gesso all over the page. And then I will dry it really well before I go to the next step. And if you're not familiar with using gesso, it's a, a, an acrylic ground. It's a tiny bit gritty. It, it will depend on the brand that you buy. So next I've just taken a piece of um, notebook paper and my circle punch and punched out some shapes. And I'm going to lay this down aligning it with the top edge of my page and just take some washi tape and secure it because I want to get some paint inside those circular cutouts. Just adding tape here and there so that as I'm adding the paint, the paper doesn't come up too much and spoil my shapes. So I have distressed paint in broken china and I'm applying it directly to those openings. And just get a nice fairly even layer. It doesn't matter if it's a bit blotchy because we're going to make it even <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to make it even blotchy or on purpose. So just getting the paint inside of the circles. So the next part can get a bit messy, so I'm going to put some deli paper in between those so I don't get it all over. Now I've put some heavy bodied paints, gray acrylic paint on my mat, and with a lot of water in my brush, I'm just getting a nice juicy layer on top. You want to work fairly quickly for this and add the alcohol while the paint is still wet, and it should be fairly runny paint. Not like run down the page if you lift the book up, but pretty watered down. It allows that alcohol to eat right through the paint and make those cool splotchy marks. And then I just took my roll of paper towel and rolled over it. Now, my paper towels do have kind of a circular pattern. Serendipity is great because I'm layering circles, but it pulls up some of the paint and some of the alcohol and so I have that really cool pattern on there and now I'm just lining that paper back up again and this is a sheet of images that I printed out from pixabay.com they're copyright free images so we'll be using those in a little bit but I just wanted to show you kind of where I'm headed so I'm going to put another layer of broken china inside of those holes. A little more modeling, not quite as even as the first layer. And I spattered it with alcohol first on my brush. And I wasn't sure with the, the distress paint how the alcohol would respond with the paint, but it really didn't do very much. A little bit, but not very much. You can see on the paper towels, there's not much of that lighter blue color. So I just dabbed off the excess with the dry paper towel. And I'm going to go again, but this time I'm going to use water because I know water will react with the distress paint. And I'm just trying to get kind of a cool modeled, textured, look inside those circles just so that I have some contrast 
with the rest of the background. And I wanted to get the water on while the paint was wet, so I just applied paint to a couple circles and then spattered the water and proceeded that way so that I got the water on while the paint was wet. And back with the paper towels again and this time I had more luck it was lifted a little more of that light blue and gave me the mottled look I was going for so time to get rid of that paper now we're all done with that and gave it a dry and I took a medium grit sanding sponge and just to create a little more texture and kind of grunge it up a little bit, take some of the paint off, I just went real lightly with the sanding sponge and then just wiped the dust off of the page. Now in order to protect what I've done so far, I'm putting a layer of matte medium all over the page and then I will dry it and that way when I put something on top of it, if I don't like it, I can I have a better chance of getting it off the page. It's not going to sink into the paint. So I have that um, Crafters Workshop stencil and Distress Paint in Wild Honey. I don't know why it's hard for me to say Distress Paint, but <laughs> I stumble over that all the time. So I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm kind of choosing which of those circular pieces I want to have the heaviest application of paint on and then the ones in between I'll do lighter. And I'm just going to end up speeding this up so that you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. But that's kind of my approach. It's like when I move the stencil I will choose which ones I want to be heaviest and what areas and then just kind of go lighter on the ones in between. I think you can see that there. So then I'm just moving the stencil and getting the paint all over the entire background. Because this is just the background that we're working on right now. The focal points will come a little later and those will be those images that I showed you that I printed out from Pixabay. And I will include the link to the page with those images from Pixabay. So if you want to grab them, like I said, they're copyright free and I think they were kind of cool. A little odd, but kind of cool. So I just grabbed that spatter brush again and spattered some water over top of that wild honey paint and let it sit for a few seconds and then blotted it up. And it didn't seem to really take up much of the paint so I decided to just try it again. Maybe a little more water this time. Waited a little bit longer and blot it again. And I got a little bit came up, but not a ton. I was looking for some kind of spattery marks in those yellow circles, but I didn't get any. So now I have this stamp set that I got. It came from one of the Chinese sellers on Amazon. Shorazu, I think it is, or something like that. But circles. So I took my VersaFine ink pad in Majestic Blue and just started putting some circles down here and there randomly and then got some second generation images so that some of them look like they're a little bit farther away in the background. And at first to my eye the blue looked like maybe it's a little too dark so while the ink was wet, I just went with a paper towel and just pushed down on top of each of those and lifted some of it. So I cut out all of those images. And I'm just going to put them down with matte medium. Well, I didn't cut all of them out. There were a couple of 
butterflies left that were like music paper that I didn't really think I wanted on the page, but all of the ones with color I did use. And someone told me, gosh, a long time ago, and I don't remember who it was. I don't remember if they were any sort of authority on collage, but they told me that it's not really collage unless your pieces are touching. Sometimes I follow that, sometimes I don't, but here I did for some reason. I wanted it to look like all of those images were tumbling down the page. So once everything was dry, I took my white Posca pen and just doodled some little dots around the boxes and then around the very edge of the stamps to make it look more like they were perforated around the edges because when I cut them out, a lot of the perforation kind of disappeared. I cut them close because I didn't want all that white edge of paper around the edges of the stamps. So that worked out pretty well. I just think these images are really interesting. And it's really cool on Pixabay. I mean, they're all like donated images. People like you and I who make art or take photographs and just upload them. And they're all offered copyright free for us to use however we want to use them. Um, some of them will ask for credit to be given, but most of them don't. So then I grabbed my Stabilo All Pencil in black, and I'm just going around the shadow side, which I decided was the right hand side, of the jars and the butterflies. Since they were the images that didn't have the dots around them, I felt like they needed something, so I'm going to give them a shadow. And then I just took a small paintbrush moistened with water and went around the, on top of the Stabilo to activate and move it out a little bit. And it just, it's a, just a super easy way to get a nice shadow. Just wipe your brush off every once in a while, dip it back in the water and just keep moving it until you like it. Stabilo will reactivate later, so if I should happen to splash something on this page and it got onto that Stabilo, it would smear again, just so you know. And then for some reason, these images, like I said, reminded me of like they were tumbling down the page. And it came to mind that that's kind of how my thoughts run at night when I'm trying to go to sleep and it's like I have all these thoughts tumbling out of my brain and it's keeping me from falling asleep so I just put tumbling thoughts on the page with those stick on letters and then went around the page first with the archival ink and in jet black and it wasn't dark enough so I put some Stabilo pencil around the edges just to bring a little tiny more grunge and shadow to the outside of the page. And that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and wait until the end because I have something more for you, a little bonus at the end. I'm just showing you that those were the pieces that were left over from my Pixabay printout and the Pixabay link will be at the bottom in the description box. So I have a couple of art tips for you guys today. Just a little bonus. Two things I have in my studio always are hand sanitizer. Not because I'm worried about sanitizing my hands, but because the main ingredient is alcohol. And it's the easiest way, you guys, to clean all the crud off of your hand paint and glue and what ink, whatever you have on your hands at the end of a art session. Just rub it in really good. Works good if you let it sit on your hands for a couple of minutes, although the alcohol does evaporate pretty quickly. 
but I find that it's easy to put more onto a paper towel, rub everything off, get it off of your nails, off of your hand, and voila, clean hands. Pretty cool, huh? But that's not all. All of that dried on crap that gets all over your mat, put some hand sanitizer on there and rub it around and let it sit for a few seconds or a minute or so and it will work its magic and then just grab a scraper of some kind that's not going to cut into your mat. I have the glass um, media mat by Tim Holtz but it also works on the non-stick craft mats. Um, on that white area is where my gesso and matte medium was all dried and it lifts right up and then makes kind of a gooey mess but just grab some paper towels and it wipes right off and this is the other item that I use all the time it is daddy vans it's 100% beeswax and you know how after you've worked on a page in your journal the two page spread you close your journal and the next time you open to that page they have a tendency to stick together and sometimes they'll pull the paint up or pull the papers up that you work so hard to create. Just take a little bit of the Daddy Vans. You don't need very much at all on a soft cloth or a paper towel. Put a light layer all over the page. Wait a couple of minutes and then take another clean dry paper towel or rag and just buff it and it leaves a bit of a sheen but not very much at all really it does bring out the colors a little bit and pages won't stick together can you use it on pages that you've glued other papers down to you can and i'm going to show you right here on this page just go carefully so that you're not catching the edge of a paper and pulling it up yourself but just get a nice light layer pay close attention to the middle of the book where the pages meet that seems to be the place where um, the paint gets pulled up the most and then just buff it off i actually think the pages look better after the addition of the wax but the main thing is not to make them look better even if they kind of do but to prevent them from sticking together. And you'll know when it's buffed enough, it won't feel sticky at all. And no more ruined artwork. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, please. Share it out to your friends. That really helps my channel a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you did that and come back and see what's up next. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.